welcome to, to the webinar. My name is Daniel, uh, and today I'll give you a brief introduction into Kyber Cyber, Kipo Cyber Range platform. I will show you a demo, a live demo. I've got two fallbacks. I hope it won't come to that. Uh, currently, uh, I am a architecture lead and tech lead of the CyberRange platform uh, developed at Muni. I am a researcher here. Muni stands for uh, Masaryk University. Uh, we are located in Brno, Czech Republic, closer to Vienna than to Prague. Um, we've got 10 faculties, 40, 400 uh, study programs, and more than 30,000 students. I'll start briefly with uh, Kipo history. Um, we've started developing, uh, or the idea for a cyber range uh, was conceived somewhere around 2012 uh, and 2013. Uh, we've been awarded funds, funds uh, by Ministry of Interior of Czech Republic to develop a cyber range. Uh, the first generation of the cyber range uh, was let's say already at 2014. Um, it was used to run first national cyber exercise, exercise with uh, Czech National Cyber and Information Security Agency. Uh, we've been then awarded uh, a Minister of Interior Award for excellent results for the cyber range. The first generation ran on Open Nebula. Uh, and also second generation ran on Open Nebula, also funded by the Ministry of Interior by another grant. We've uh, since then uh, held additional around, I think eight or so national and international uh, cyber exercises. The exercises are a, a bit smaller than Lock Shields exercises, but still, uh, still quite big. Uh, and also we've uh, done some let's say commercial work. Uh, we've created exercises and trainings for partners uh, managing critical infrastructures. And this was run also on the second generation, also on Open Nebula. The third gen, uh, that's today, uh, it's again funded by the Ministry of Interior of Czech Republic. We plan to release it as open source. We've uh, done several technical and legal uh, steps to do so. Uh, it is used now in its prototypical mode to run lectures and courses at the university. Uh, and this generation runs or uses OpenStack cloud provider. How the Concordia uh, fits in? Well, it helps to speed up the open source open sourcing process. For example, we've already uh, opened the topology definition uh, format to promote further tools in interoperability and federation or integration. And we hope for Concordia to provide platform for EU-wide dissemination. I'll start with a short demo of what uh, it looks like for a trainee to use the platform. Um, I hope you can see now uh, the web screen. Is that correct? Yeah, it's fine. Perfect. Um, so this is just, this is what a typical trainee would do. He would log in uh, into the cyber range and uh, he would be asked to uh, use an access token, which will give him or she or her, sorry, uh, uh, access to so-called training run. Uh, so let's try. Perfect. This is what we call a training. It's got um, different levels. There are seven of them. Uh, we have three types of level. The first one you see is so-called information level, um, which can give introductions uh, or information needed to uh, go further. This is so-called uh, 
game level, you can see topology, uh, which we, is used in the training. Um, it will generate URL for the console and we'll try to actually access um, <laughs> yes, so this is what you can do in the training. You can access the physical machines or virtual machines in this case. You can log in and you can uh, do what you are asked for in uh, the training. So um, each game level has different hints that can help you to actually go further if you don't know how to uh, proceed further. So we'll try to take all the hints or if you don't, uh, if you're not really sure, you can also reveal solution, which is then uh, used uh, to get a flag or it reveals a flag. Okay, so now I'll go through the whole uh, training run very quickly uh, to continue with the webinar. Okay, so and the last one. These are all game levels, and uh, after conclusion, what uh, our trainers like to do is to create feedback questionnaires uh, to actually assess, uh, let's say, the expected knowledge and so on. So uh, the trainees uh, can can uh, answer different type of question. Uh, okay, and after finishing uh, the training run, you can see how you compare to other players. Uh, and what was your score? So this is a very short, uh, uh, let's say, comparison of others. And after I go back to the presentation, I'll show the second demo where, when we can see or where we, we will see uh, the training organizer view and uh, he will get even more information. So this is just your assessment, let's say, to others. Okay, so this is so-called training run. I see some questions here. Uh, I'll try to answer them uh, after, after the presentation, if you don't mind. Um, okay, so this is the third gen Kipo CyberEnge platform. I will go into technical details right now. I hope not too much. Um, what we use for technologies. Uh, we use OpenStack as cloud provider for the network emulation for the topology. You have seen uh, that I could actually go into the console. That's that's a Spice console used by uh, OpenStack. So the whole network is uh, fully emulated in virtual environment. Um, our OpenStack instance right now, for the Kip, which is dedicated for the Kipo, we have around 1,200 uh, cores available and lots and lots of op uh, RAM. So uh, the, the only really the limiting factor is really uh, the cores. At backend, we use Python with uh, Django REST framework and Java with Spring Boot framework. At front end, we use Angular 9. Now migrating to Angular 10, we use Ansible for so-called sandbox provisioning. Uh, I'll talk about that. We use Docker both for deployment and for complex asynchronous tasks. We use Redis uh, for task queue for these asynchronous tasks. We use OpenID Connect uh, for authentication, OIDC for short, and Elasticsearch for event store. All the events you have seen, the hints taken, uh, going through the levels that stored in Elasticsearch and that helped uh, you as a player to see your training run, uh, how you did and so on, how much it took uh, and so on and so forth. Um, what's at the heart 
is so-called sandbox service. And uh, what you first do is you define a topology uh, via topology definition. This is just a simple UML model. Uh, you've got topology definition in the middle and you define your hosts, your networks and your rotors and via mappings, you connect them, you group them so you can then provision them. Provision them. Um, so this is, uh, I know there are definitely other projects that uh, deal with modeling, threat earth, for example, which we work with uh, already, or we've had some initial discussions, let's say. Uh, so this is a simple model of a topology definition of the network you are emulating. This, is get, this gets then uh, translated into orchestrating template, which is used to orchestrate the OpenStack to build and emulated topology. Um, now, for sandbox definition, the topology definition is part of so-called sandbox definition. Uh, sandbox definition also has provisioning definition, which means this is the Ansible. You say, okay, on this computer, this is the database that's installed. Uh, this, is, this is the vulnerability I want to have there. This is uh, the version of Apache server I want to have there and so on. And this consists of sandbox definition. Um, you then create so-called pools of these, uh, let's say, sandboxes of, or of sandbox allocation units. So one pool uh, is, uh, has one sandbox definition and all the sandbox allocation units that allocate sandboxes has the same definition. This is beneficial when you are creating trainings as I've shown you, you've got uh, in the pool, you've got like, for example, 40 sandboxes, which are uh, taken from the pool. So, for, so 40 players can play at once the game, the training that I'm showing you. Uh, and this is, uh, this is what I'm, I'm showing you this because uh, it's uh, important to say that the training you have seen there are many steps that you have to do to actually create it and to actually execute it. Uh, this is how, uh, on the left, you can see how the topology definition looks like. It's really a simple file uh, with hosts, routers, and so on. This is just an example. And on the right hand, you can see uh, this is Ansible playbook. Uh, installing MySQL database and some different strategies for uh, our tools. Um, the sandbox service works like uh, so. First, it emulates or it creates the topology in the OpenStack. Uh, after the topology is instantiated, uh, network configuration is ran. Uh, and only after that, the user provisioning or sandbox provisioning uh, is uh, used. And this is what the actual trainer, this is the one who creates the trainings. This is uh, what he or she creates uh, for the players to use throughout the game. Okay. Um, I've shown you uh, already a training run and now I'll show you the steps that led uh, into the possibility of creating such training run. Okay. I will log in as a power user right now. And um, now I don't see only runs, I see all the agendas. Um, the definitions are in essence Git repositories. And you can import them uh, and after they are imported, uh, they are essentially used to provision uh, the whole sandbox. Um, I'll show you very briefly uh, this is, this is the whole topology definition I've so, shown you in the slides. This is, it's just small sandbox. We have two hosts here, server and home. One of them is hidden, so we cannot see them in the topology, but they, it, they are there. We've got two routers, two networks, some mappings, and these are the groups. 
uh, grouping the uh, machines together. And the provisioning is really simple in this case because it's small sandbox, let's say. Um, this is, uh, I've got some, this is dashboard for OpenStack Cloud. You can see that I've got three sandboxes already allocated. Uh, and this is why I could play the game. Um, and back to the cyber range. Um, af after you upload the uh, definition, the sandbox definition, you can create pools. This is, this is the first one that I've already taken one uh, sandbox from. We can create another one. The size is, well, let's say three sandboxes. We keep pick up uh, the sandbox definition and create a pool. We have the second pool and we can now allocate sandboxes. Three requests will be uh, created, which will then be asynchronously executed to actually provision uh, the, uh, the sandboxes. The first stage is already running. So the pool is getting built. I'll now also again jump to the OpenStack dashboard. Hopefully it, yeah. And you can see that two new, uh, two new sandboxes or heat stacks were allocated. Okay. So our pools are uh, running or are building. And now for the trainings, you start uh, with what we call a training definition. Uh, it can be imported and uh, exported. Uh, I've shown you, you have seen one uh, training definition we call house of cards. I can upload, let's say a new version if I want uh, and I can directly edit it. Uh, and here you can see how it looks like for the, what we call a, a designer or an organizer of uh, some event. So training definition, uh, this is the designer. You can see that it's the introduction uh, we have seen in the first uh, demo. You can go through the levels. Uh, these are all the game levels. This is the conclusion level, and this is the feedback level in which you can create questions uh, and so on. So this is how you design the training definition. You can move the levels around as you wish. Um, this, is, this is the solution part. I, I think it's, it's uh, quite, quite uh, intuitive. If not, we can go through that uh, later if there is, uh, if you want. Uh, okay, so after you create training definition, you can create uh, so-called training instance. You can see this is the instance I've created and training instance is some event which has start and end. Uh, and what I can do is create another demo instance going to tomorrow. This is some prefix that you can use for the tokens. And we will use the new training definition, create the training instance, and we can assign the pools. So this is, this is I'm saying, if any new player accesses the game, this is the pool the sandboxes will be taken from. So let's see if any, yeah. It's still running, it's still allocating. It takes time. Uh, this is how it's supposed to look like. For example, the second request. So the first stage is complete, the OpenStack is built. This is the networking stage. You can see the output of the Ansible that actually networks the whole topology. And the last stage, this is the user Ansible, is the actual provisioning. So you can see if anything went wrong or if it's okay. 
Um, after you create an instance, this is the access token. I cannot access any uh, any training runs of this instance because it's not allocated yet, but this is uh, the token you've seen in the beginning. And I'll try to again to uh, access some run under my name. And you can see that uh, the run is here. Uh, this is a live demo. You can see there are errors possibly. You can see that the game started at uh, the first minute and not at zero. Uh, it's work in progress and we won't, we, we won't hide that. Um, and we won't, don't want to hide that. Um, after uh, your 40 or 50 players have gone through the game, what you can see uh, is how they, how they did. You can see pr uh, progress in real time, how they are doing right now. Or you can see the results of the players. And this is, this is what the players seen already. This is uh, the scatter plot of the score of the players. There are two players. The first one uh, was uh, earlier today and the second one you've seen, I uh, speed, sped through the game. This is the progress of the respective players, uh, assessment uh, answers and dashboard overview. So this uh, is the training agenda. Let's see if the pools, uh, okay, it's still built in. You can see that the OpenStack stage is already finished, but the uh, networking is still running. And uh, that is all for me uh, as per to the live demo. I'll now return for a brief time to the presentation. This is what we've seen. Just a quick summary. Kipo uses OpenStack and it is a third generation uh, of uh, CyberRange platform at Masaryk University. It is used during courses and lectures at Masaryk University. Public release of open source is planned uh, for the end of this year. Right now, it's possible to create trainings and capture the flag games and sandboxes, obviously. But the sandboxes, or, or sorry, the capture the flag games are what we call an applications on top of the core platform, which is the sandbox service. And uh, the biggest potential is in the content and the ecosystem of tools. Because you can easily, uh, if you, for example, talk about uh, cyber ranges for maritime, uh, or for ships, uh, what is usually done these times in some ranges is that you instantiate one virtual machine that simulates uh, the ship and such things, I think, and I am pretty confident can be deployed in cyber ranges similar to this. And at the end, uh, this is an email info at kipo.cz. If you want to join as early adopters, let us know. And uh, these are Concordia's credentials. Uh, retweet, uh, user in, a, in your post, uh, we will be very pleased. And that's all for me. Thank you for your attention.